and a very good morning to each and every one of us here in the sanctuary this morning. Today is Sunday, June the 5th, the day of Pentecost, and also our communion Sunday. The watchword for the week reads, for all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God, Romans 8 and verse 14. Please, let's stand for the call to worship. In the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, says the Lord. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. Let us join our voices together as we sing our opening hymn, hymn 176, Oh, let the power fall on me, my Lord. for Pentecost in our liturgy books also projected for us page 146 please remain standing Jesus said to the disciples I will ask the father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever this is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him you know him because he abides with you and he will be in you we are god's temple and god's spirit dwells within us as god has said i will live in them and walk among them and i will be their god and they shall be my people since we have these promises let us ask god to cleanse us from every impurity let us pray God the Father, maker of heaven and earth, have, have mercy upon us. us. God the Son, Savior of the world, be, be gracious, gracious unto us. us. God the Holy Spirit, Lord and giver of life, stay with us forever. Holy, blessed, and glorious Trinity, have, have mercy on us. As we say for now, Psalm 51, have mercy on me, O God, in your enduring goodness. According to the fullness of your compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness. And cleanse me, cleanse from, me my from my sin. For I acknowledge my faults. I am always conscious of my sin. Against you only have I sinned. And that what is evil in your eyes. You desire truth in the inward being. Teach me wisdom in the secret places of the heart. Oh, purify me, then I shall be clean. Oh, wash me, then shall I be good. Hide your face from my sins. And blot out my Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. And renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from my presence. And take out your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. And support me with a willing spirit. O Lord, open my lips. And my mouth shall proclaim your praise. 
You have no delight in sacrifice. I, I would give it. it. My sacrifice is a humble spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. We will now sing, breathe on me, breath of God. God, who purifies and sanctifies the world, hear us as we humbly pray that you would take possession of the souls you have redeemed and that you would complete your work begun in us. Let, Let your spirit of truth illuminate our darkness, that we may understand the deep things of your word. Let your spirit of wisdom save us from all false choices, that in your light we may see light and in your straight path may not stumble. Let your spirit of purity cleanse us from all stain of evil. Let your spirit of peace enable us to walk humbly with you and lovely with each other. Let your spirit of power and love make us strong against temptation that righteousness may abound in our lives. Turn our hearts from the love of the world to the love of your will, that we may walk in the way of your precepts to the end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now turn with me, please, to page 243 as we recite the Confession of Faith. Confession of Faith, number three. God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Glory, Glory be to God on high. God is light. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with one another. God. Glory be to God on high. God is love. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Glory be to God on high. God has given us eternal life, and this is his son. Thanks be to you, O Lord. Now we are the children of God, Hereby, we know that we dwell in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. Thanks be to you, O Lord. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thanks be to you, O Lord. The world passes away and the lust thereof, and those who do the will of God abide forever. Thanks be to you, O Lord. Please be seated. We continue in prayer. Eternal and most merciful Father, we praise you for all the gifts you have given to us, and especially this day for the coming of the Holy Spirit to be with the church forever. We thank you for his guidance in our perplexity. We bless you that he brings us to faith maintains us in hope and fills us with the love for you and for one another through jesus christ our lord amen let us pray for our church god of all peace and consolation grant to your church the gift of your holy spirit to renew illuminate refresh and sanctify our souls through jesus christ our lord amen Together we pray for the unity of the church. Together, Lord God, God bless, bless all Christians, Christians as they strive to draw near to you and to each other. Make us one as you are, one, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Together again we pray for our congregation. Lord God, 
who sent the Holy Spirit to the disciples in the burning fire of love, give courage and boldness to your people to proclaim the truth, to seek your glory, and to advance your kingdom through Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. Almighty God, bless and uphold those who preach the gospel. Be with them in all dangers and difficulties. Bless their work that all may be saved and so bring forward a time when all the world will turn to you and worship you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We now pray for our leaders of the nations. Almighty God, inspire those in positions of responsibility in leadership and in government. Give them an understanding of truth and justice that all may work together and serve you in unity and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together for those who suffer. Together. Lord, help all who are troubled in any way to be strengthened by your Holy Spirit. Give to us a spirit of service that we may support and serve all who are distressed or in pain, relieving them as we are able. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hold us together with the church triumphant. May the Holy Spirit so build, up, build us up in faith and truth and love that we may be found among those who believe in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Together we say the prayer the Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I know ask our Reverend David Ince, to come and give us the welcome, the greetings, celebrations, and notices. A blessed good morning to each and every one. A blessed Pente day of Pentecost as we gather in God's house today to worship him and to recognize that day when the Holy Spirit came upon us to dwell in us forever, those who are his. We say hello to and welcome to you online as you join with us, whether on our Facebook pages or our YouTube channel. We say welcome to you and may we together have a wonderful time as we worship God in spirit and in truth this morning. Are there any first time visitors with us this morning in the sanctuary? Any first timers? No first timers? You know, behind the mask these days, you don't know who is first time from who is not. And so, we say welcome to you as you join with us this morning. For any first timers joining us online, we say a special welcome to you today. I don't have any birthdays being listed here in my diary, uh, but are there any persons celebrating a birthday this week? I know we had a few last week. Any birthdays this week? No birthdays this week. And so we continue then in worship. Before we ask Sister Anna to come and lead us in song. I just want to share a few notices with you. Of course, we come together uh, every midweek, Wednesday, 12.30 in the p.m. for our midweek spiritual nuggets. And this is online, both on our Facebook pages, Bethlehem Moravian Church and Faith Moravian Church Barbados, and on our YouTube channel, Bethlehem and Faith Pastorate. And on Wednesday evening, on our web conferencing platform. We join together for Bible study. We are in the book of Corinthians, Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. We are at chapter 14. The link would be made available in our chat as per usual, but it is the same one that we have been using for the duration of our online Bible study. Next Sunday, of course, I just want to invite parents and young ones, parents to send out your young ones to Sunday school if you are in the St. Philip area, at 9 a.m., Faith will be having their Sunday school. Sorry, at 9.45, Faith will be having their Sunday school. And so you can join with Faith, 9.45, and you 
parents, you can come on out and worship with us at Faith at 8 a.m. So service, 8 a.m., Sunday School, 945. Here at Bethlehem, it is reversed at 9 a.m., Sunday School. And so you young ones, you can send them out. And then parents, you can stay on with your kids for 10 a.m. service. So Sunday School, 9 a.m. at Bethlehem, 945 at Faith. Moravian Music Sunday is scheduled for June the 26th, where we celebrate our legacy of music here within the Moravian Church. And so we invite you to come on out and worship with us, especially on that day, but every day, every Sunday, you are welcome to be with us. And we ask all members to bear the province in prayer as we prepare for Synod, July 17th to the 22nd. It is a blended Synod this year. And so we will be meeting in person on a conference level, level but virtually on a pro province level. And so we continue to pray for Synod that will be guided by the Holy Spirit according to God's will. Remember to pray for our second shuttings at Faith. There is our sister Eileen and brother Charles Brewster, uh, Duncan Harris also, and here at Bethlehem, our brother Winston Kamabach, continue to remember them in prayer. And for our, all of our shuttings, we continue to lift them up before God. Couple other notices. Cuckoo Day on June the 25th. You are asked to place your orders by the 21st and pick up on the 25th will be between 12 noon and 4 p.m. Uh, I think you can see it on, on screen. There are a number of different things listed there. So not just cuckoo. You can get your pudding and sauce and baked pork and those types of things. So you can join with us as we share some food together. Of course, there's a little exchange that has to happen, but you can share with us Cuckoo Day, June the 25th. Uh, external to us here in the Moravian Church would be Bible Breakfast. This is under the auspices of the Barbados Auxiliary, the Bible Society here in Barbados, and the breakfast comes off next Saturday, or this coming Saturday, I should say, 8.30 a.m. Divi South Winds. Uh, contribution is $50. Uh, which is what it has been for the last 10 years. And so you are invited to come on and support the work of the Bible Society as it seeks to re-engage after this COVID period where much of the activities were curtailed. And so this would be the first breakfast since 2019. And so we encourage us to come on out and share in fellowship with the members of the Bible Society. There is one other notice uh, we are invited to Moravians in conversation. Uh, this will be a provincial uh, activity, and more information will be shared shortly. It would be led by one of our own, Dr. Winnell Curtin Roberts. Uh, so, as you know, she is in Europe, uh, so it's a fully online, and it is dealing with things such as discrimination and justice and those types of things. Uh, so we as a church need to be aware and to know. And so I will share that information with you. So look out for it as it comes available. I think these are all the notices. I don't see any hands or anything else. And so I invite Sister Anna to come forward and lead us in song as we continue in worship. Good morning, brothers and sisters. We're invited to stand with me as we worship this morning in song. The Holy Ghost power moving just like a magnet. The Holy Ghost power moving just like a magnet. Moving here, moving there, just like the day of Pentecost. Holy Ghost power moving just like a magnet. The Holy Ghost power moving just like a magnet. Holy Ghost Fire, Holy Ghost Fire, Holy Ghost Fire, Holy 
just like a magnet. You may be seated. Let me say thank you to Analysia and young Anaya for joining her this morning. We turn now to our scripture readings. Our first lesson comes to us from Ezekiel 36 verses 22 to 27. The second comes to us from Romans 8 verses 14 to 17. Today's first lesson is taken from Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 22 to 27. 
and it reads, Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for mine holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whither ye went. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. For I will take you from among the heathen, and gather you out of all the countries, and I will bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye will be clean from all your filthiness, and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit I will put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments, and do them. This is the word of the Lord. Romans chapter 8, verse 14 to 17, and it reads, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, there are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit, that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and join heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. The word of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. We thank Brother Shane and Sister Michelle for reading for us this morning. As we go into our offertory now, everyone knows by now that we are not passing the offering plate around. So I trust that the spirit will fall on each and every one of us this morning, that even though we might have given as we came in, we may give as we are leaving. So let us say the offertory sentence together. Come in. Indeed, it's here now, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship him that way, for God is spirit. So those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. John 4, 23 to 24. Let us sing together now our offertory hymn, hymn 178. Holy Spirit, truth divine. Stand with me, please.
joy divine, gladden thou this heart of mine. In the desert ways I sing, spring, oh well, forever spring. Let us pray. Loving God and Heavenly Father, we come before you another Sunday, O oh Lord, to give of ourselves, our tithes, and our offerings. Take and receive us, and all we give, O oh Lord. Multiply them, we pray. We thank you for the opportunity, O oh Lord, that we can indeed give back to you. All these things we say in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give thanks. give thanks this morning. So now as we prepare to hear the word that the Lord has laid on the heart of our Reverend David Ince, we sing the hymn 172. Come Holy Spirit come, let thy bright beams arise. Dispel the darkness from our minds and open all our eyes. 172.
loving God and eternal Heavenly Father, as we come before you once again, coming, Lord God, to hear from you. We pray, Heavenly Father, that as we come on this day of Pentecost, may you, Holy Spirit, so guide and direct all that we would say, sing, and do in this place this day, that as we worship you, you and you alone will be glorified, and we will be drawn ever closer to you. So hear us now, Heavenly Father, speak to your servant, speak through him, that as we together meditate upon your word, your name would be glorified, and we'll be blessed. All these things we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. You may be seated. A blessed good morning again to each and every one as we gather on this day of Pentecost. This morning, I want to reflect on the two passages that were read for us by Brother Shane and Sister Michelle. And so I just read for you again for from Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 27, and Romans chapter 8, verses 14 to 17. And it reads, And I will put my spirit in you so that you will follow my degrees and be careful to obey my regulations. And the Romans passage, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you receive God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Abba, Father. For his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. And since we are his children, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. But if we are to share his glory, we must also share his suffering. The word of the Lord. This morning as we reflect on this day of Pentecost, on the passages that are before us, I reflect on the theme, Holy Spirit, the difference maker. Holy Spirit, the difference maker. The Holy Spirit indeed, he seals us, he secures us, he sanctifies us. And as we commemorate the birthday of the church, this day we also remember that it is on this day that the Holy Spirit came to dwell in us. Yes, we know that the Holy Spirit operated prior to this throughout God's holy word. But many times he came upon persons for a specified and specific purpose and for a period of time, and then he went away. Jesus would have told his disciples that they are to wait. Wait for the comforter, the helper, who was coming to them, who was going to make all the difference. The account of this, we read in Acts of the Apostles, in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4, we read these words, On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a song from heaven, like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then, what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them, and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them ability. And we know that on this occasion, that as they started to speak and to testify and to witness for the Lord, that others heard and others were attracted to what was happening and was wondering what is this that is happening? And need, need I, I remind you that these same folk whom were now speaking and attracting attention, they were previously hiding and trying not to draw attention to themselves. Indeed, after our Lord and Savior was arrested and crucified, many of them scattered and they were into hiding. But Jesus, when he met them following his resurrection, he encouraged them. And he said to them, you wait. You wait because I'm sending someone in my place. This is the Holy Spirit. He will encourage you. He will bring everything to memory, all the things that I have taught you. He will make, he will be that difference in your lives. And indeed, as we look at the lives of the apostles, we see a significant difference. As I said, they were previously hiding, and now they are proclaiming. 
And as we read through the Acts of the Apostles, we know that they were so bold, not because of themselves, but because of what the Holy Spirit was doing in them and through them. And this morning, this same Holy Spirit, He is available to us to move in us, to make a difference in our lives, that we can go out and make a difference in this world. When you think of it, the Holy Spirit, when he came upon the disciples, the world was never the same after that. The disciples went forth. They preached the word. Men, women, boys, and girls came to the knowledge of salvation. Yes, a few were upset, but the difference was made because of the Holy Spirit indwelling power. And so we read in the Romans passage, verse 15, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. We don't have the spirit of fear. The Holy Spirit is here to embolden us, to give us the courage, the authority, to speak in God's name as he indwells us. This morning, the Holy Spirit is very present in the lives of every believer. I say again, the Holy Spirit is present in the lives of every believer. And he is here to empower us. He doesn't force himself on us, but he is there, ready, willing to work in us and through us, imploring us to be true worshipers and witnesses for God. Indeed, that is what we are called to do as God's chosen. We are called to be witnesses. We are called to be difference makers as the Holy Spirit indwells us. I said he makes the difference in the way that he seals us. The Holy Spirit seals us. He stamps us with the seal of approval. We are God's children. Yes, we are not perfect. The things we have done, things in the past that we shouldn't have done. But God is calling us to himself. Jesus died that we may live. He died that our sins be forgiven. And the Holy Spirit is in us to keep us and to testify through us of whose we are. Not who we were, but whose we are. And so as we receive the Holy Spirit this morning, as we allow him to work in us and through us, through us, remember, we are sealed by him. He is the one who secures the salvation in us. We can't do it in ourselves. Ephesians tells us that it is not by works, it is by God's grace. And it's the Holy Spirit that keeps us. Paul, in writing to the Ephesians, in chapter 1, tells, tells them in verse 13, In him you also trusted, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You are sealed, brothers and sisters, by the Holy Spirit of promise. He is the stamp that marks us as God's chosen. He is the guarantee of our salvation. Those who would buy you know, if the beef or your pork, especially up from the U.S. market, you would often see that stamp USDA on it, certifying it as quality. The Holy Spirit is the stamp upon us, Amen. certifying us as God's children. He is the one who shields us, who keeps us, who protects us. It doesn't mean that we wouldn't have challenges, the Michel would have read for us, that as we receive God's glory, there's also some suffering that comes along with it because the world is opposed to him. But the Holy Spirit will keep us. He will bring us through. He stamps us with his seal of approval. And if you don't have the Holy Spirit, then you're none of his. God's word tells us this. And so when we are God's children, we know for certain that the Holy Spirit is in us and with us. Romans 8 and verse 9 tells us, But you are not in the flesh, but you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, 
Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. And so this morning, as the Holy Spirit indwells us, we can say with certainty that we are his. Because he seals us. He secures us. He secures us by living in and through us. Again, going back to Romans 8, that passage that encourages so many believers. There is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. There is no condemnation. It is deployed the devil to condemn us for our past mistakes, even some of our present ones. But God says in him, when we are walking in the spirit, there's no condemnation. And if we slip, we have an advocate. If we slip, he says to us, come back, confess, and you will, forgive, and you will be forgiven. If you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And this is the security that we have this morning in the Holy Spirit and what he, does, what he does in our lives. He gives us the ability to walk in holiness. He gives us the ability to live a sin-free life. I know when you hear that, some persons will pause. But we are still here on earth. We are still prone to sin and difficulty, yes. But God says in his word, through the Apostle Paul in, in Corinthians, and you know we are studying in Corinthians now in Bible study, no temptation has overtaken you except such as in common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with each temptation, make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. What I'm saying, brothers and sisters, is God has already provided a way out of any temptation that we may face. When we slip, when we fall, it's because of our own weakness. Amen. Because of our yielding to that temptation. But we don't have to because God has already provided a way of escape. And it is true, the power of the Holy Spirit living in us, that we can walk in holiness. We can walk to be more like our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. In James 1, verses 13 through 16, we read these words. Let no one say when he is tempted, I'm tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then, when desires were con has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. So we sin when we yield to temptation. And we know that well-known hymn, Yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. Each victory will help you, some other to win. Fight vanity onward. Each passion subdue. Look ever to Jesus. He will carry you through. The Holy Spirit, our helper, stands ready today to empower us, to help us overcome the sins that the temptation that will tempt us to sin. He is there with us. He is our helper. That's what Jesus said to his disciples. He is sending another, a comforter, a helper. And we see and we saw the difference that it made within the disciples, the apostles, as they went throughout the world preaching the word of God, being a witness for him. And so this morning, as we celebrate, as we commemorate the day of Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit into our lives, remember, he has come that we will be worshipers of Almighty God, that we'll be witnesses for him, going out and letting others know whose we are. He's come that we can walk in the way that he has called us to walk and so he sanctifies us so he seals us he secures us and he sanctifies us paul in his second letter to the thessalonians write these words but we 
are bound to give thanks to God always for you. Brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit. And belief, let me read that again for you. Because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth, to which he called you by our gospel for the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Sanctification, a big word which means to be set apart, to be made holy. God has set us apart this morning as his children, as his special people. He's called us out to be holy as he is holy. To be like his son, our Lord and Savior. That is why we are called Christian. We are like little Christ. We are called to be imitators of our Lord and Savior. We are called to walk in the way that he has walked. But we don't do that on our own. We do that by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, which seals us which secures us, and which sanctifies us. And so as we join with believers across this world today, across this universe, we commemorate and remember the coming of the Holy Spirit into our lives, even as we ourselves would have accepted him as Lord and Savior. He sealed us. He secures us. And today, he sanctifies us. Sanctify, sanctification, as many would tell you, it is, occurs at the point of salvation, but it is also a process. As we walk, as we seek to live for our Lord and Savior, we are drawn closer and closer to him. We are drawn into being more like him. And so we can say thanks to the Holy Spirit today for all that he has done all that he continues to do, and how he works in us and through us. I said earlier, he does not force himself on us, but he is there for us whenever we are ready to receive him and to work in us. And as the Holy Spirit would have worked with men of old throughout the Old Testament and into the New, he's also ready to work in and through us. Moses parted the Red Sea. David, he slayed the lion and the bear. Samson was able to defeat more in his death than when he lived. And the disciples, who we follow on after the apostles, they went forth and became world changers. And we too, with the Holy Spirit's indwelling, can be world changers today. So often the, the evil one wants to silence us. And that's... You only need to look at the media today and you see all the different court cases that are coming against believers because they choose to stand for God. It's all in an effort to silence us. But we have the spirit within us. We don't have the spirit of fear. We have the Holy Spirit indwelling in us. And he's promised that he will always be with us, never leaving us, never forsaking us. And so as we come into this place this morning as we recognize all that he has done and is doing for us. May we step forth in the assurance that he is with us to take us to that place that God has prepared to do the work that he has prepared for us to do. The good work that our God has prepared for us even before we came to him. He already had us in mind. And so we can trust in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We can worship our Father as we receive the Holy Spirit's guidance. So we thank you, Holy Spirit, this morning for coming to us, for living in us, for being our comforter, for being our helper, for being our guide, sealing us, securing us, and sanctifying us. Amen. Amen. And so may we welcome the Holy Spirit into our lives this day and allow him to work 
that work that he has prepared for us. I invite my sister Anna to come back again and to lead us in the singing of, it's a very short song, and even if you don't know it, I'm sure that you will know it by the time she has sung it twice for us. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Be there in our presence. And so, Anna, lead us as we again welcome the Holy Spirit into our lives, into our worship this morning. And as we go forth into the remainder of this day, the remainder of this week, into the remainder of our lives, until the Lord should come, that we would be witnesses for him through the power of the Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit, be here with your presence, fill me with your power, live inside of me. Welcome, Holy Spirit, welcome, Holy Spirit.
thanks, Sister Anna, for leading us in song as we again welcome the Holy Spirit to be our guide, to live inside of us, to use us, to mold us, to shape us into the children that God has called us to be, to be holy as he is holy, to walk worthy, not in our strength, but in the power of the Holy Spirit, to be witnesses and worshipers of Almighty God. Let us pray. A loving God and eternal Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of your Spirit. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for coming to dwell in us and among us, to be our guide, to be our comforter, to be our helper. And as we continue in this act of worship, even as we come around your table, Lord Jesus, to remember the finished work of Calvary and the salvation that is ours because of all that you have done. We thank you. We thank you too for the gift that you have bestowed upon us. You reminded the disciples that they should wait. Wait until they receive the gift of the Holy Spirit who will teach us all that we need to, to know. And so as we gather around the table, we commemorate, we wait upon the Holy Spirit to guide and to direct us in this act of worship. So be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For those who will be leaving us at this point in time, I pray that God will go with you, blessing you, guiding you, directing you throughout the remainder of this day, the remainder of this week. Those of you who are joining us around the table, I encourage you at this time to continue in prayer, private prayer of preparation, as we come before our Lord and Savior, as we come around the table to commemorate his death, burial, and resurrection. Prepare ourselves. First hymn is 558 and not 588. 558. We come now to your table, Lord. So just in preparation. 